I shot him six times. What's going on, Hard Fanatics? Welcome to I Shot Him Six Times YouTube Horror Movie Channel. As you know, I'm your host and creator of the channel, Marcus. If you have not done so already, please shoot this video a like. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm a ton. As well as if you're a new viewer to this channel, please shoot that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you get all the latest content updates to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the official Scream 6 cast list that was released by HelloSydney.com a few days ago. A lot of us have been waiting for this cast list to drop so we can speculate on these characters, get their names, see what we can try to figure out, theorize, and see who, if we can figure out who's going to be Ghostface, who's going to end up being a survivor, and who's going to subsequently end up dead in the film. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the cast list, and I will also share with you guys a theory of mine that I have regarding two of the characters in the cast list. So let's get into it. And the confirmed cast list reads... Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers, Dermot Maroney as Detective Bailey, Devin Dakota as Annika, Hayden Panettiere as Kirby Reed, Henry Zerny as Dr. Christopher Stone, Jack Champion as Ethan Landry, Jasmine Savoy Brown as Mindy Meeks Martin, Jenna Ortega as Tara Carpenter, Josh Segarra as Danny Brackett, Liana Liberato as Quinn Bailey, Mason Gooden as Chad Meeks Martin, Melissa Barrera as Sam Carpenter, Roger L. Jackson returning as the voice of Ghostface, Samara Weaving will be playing Laura, Secret Unrevealed Cameo, name of a secret character, we are going to talk about that as well. Thomas Kadrat as Brooks, and Tony Ravalori as Jason Carvey. So as we all know, Courtney Cox, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, Mason Gooding, Jasmine Savoy Brown, and Hayden Panettiere are returning characters to the franchise. Obviously, you know, the core four of, some, um, of Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, Mason Gooden, and Jasmine Savoy Brown were in Screen 5 as well as Courtney Cox has been in the entire franchise. And as we know, Hayden Panettiere has, was in Scream 4 and she's making a return to Scream 6. So what we're going to touch on in this video is the new cast of characters that we have, these new crop of characters. And I'm going to talk about them and give you guys my thoughts and opinions on what I think these characters could be, their roles, and could they potentially be Ghostface, could they be survivors, or could they be victims. So we're going to start off here with... Both Josh Segarra's character here on the right, Danny Brackett, and Henry Zerny's character on the left, Dr. Christopher Stone. So we'll start off with Dr. Christopher Stone. Um, I believe this is the doctor that Samantha is talking to in the trailer. We didn't see him in that scene where Samantha's talking about her darkness that has followed her to New York. We didn't see who she was talking to in the trailer. It was off camera. But being that this is revealed, Henry Zerny's character is revealed as a Dr. Christopher Stone. We can assume that this is who Samantha is talking to. We all, you know, can assume that, you know, she's going to him for therapy, what have you. Now, I will say this. I'm going to make another video touching on Henry Zerny's character of Dr. Christopher Stone. As I will not lie to you guys, he is giving me heavy Hank Loomis vibes. He looks so similar to the actor who played um, Hank Loomis in Scream 1996. And he is definitely giving me, giving me those type of vibes. And I want to go in depth and talk about it in another video. So definitely somebody to keep an eye out for in Dr. Christopher Stone. Could he be revealed as a ghost face? Potentially. But I'm 50-50 I'm on him right now in terms of being ghost face. However, I do think there's potential for him to be Hank Loomis. Whether Hank Loomis would turn out to be a ghost face killer or at least a mastermind would obviously remain to be seen. But he's definitely giving me Hank Loomis vibes. Now let's move over to the right to Josh Segarra's character, Danny Brackett. And I don't know if a lot of you fans out there caught this, but in my opinion anyway, this name is an homage to Halloween's character, Annie Brackett. As soon as I saw it, I was like, huh, Danny, Annie. Okay, I, I see what you guys are doing here, Radio Silence. I see what you guys are doing. And I appreciate it. You know, Annie Brackett, you know, is a... You know, somewhat of an iconic character in the Halloween franchise. I appreciate Annie Brackett anyway. So the fact that they went with this name for Josh Segarra's character, I think is a nice little, you know, nugget and homage to the Halloween franchise. As we know, Scream always, you know, references Halloween very, very heavily. So let's talk about Danny Brackett. Who could he be? 
Well, a lot of people speculate that he could be Samantha's new boyfriend. We do see him in a few scenes in the trailer. We see him in the subway scene. We see them huddled up. You know, when Tara talks about we have to lure him in and execute him, all that stuff, even though those were two cut different audio parts, you know, basically that that's what they were implying. At least Tara was implying about executing and luring Ghostface in or what have you. But you see him in a couple scenes of the trailer, which tells me he is going to have some type of prominent role in this film. He is also seen in his wardrobe wearing the same type of coat that Billy Loomis wore in Scream 1996. Could he be Ghostface? Um, possibly. He does seem to have some size on him, which a lot of us, you know, uh, you can talk about the stuntman gig all you want or whatever. But again, I always will say believability of the Ghostface character is key. And this ghost face that we seen in the trailer looked like they had some size. And he's a pretty sturdy guy. So could he be ghost face? Absolutely. He could be revealed as ghost face. Could he be a survivor? I'm going to say not so much. I think if it's either he's going to be a victim or he's going to be a ghost face killer for me. Whether he remains to be Samantha's new boyfriend remains to be seen. If he is Samantha's new boyfriend, I doubt that they would repeat what they did with Screen 5. I don't think, you know... I don't think that would be the right direction to go, but obviously we'll have to wait and see. But I definitely think in terms of Danny Brackett's character, as of right now, as more details come out, I'm sure, you know, my opinion might change. But as of right now, I'm going to say Danny Brackett is either going to be a victim or he's going to be a Ghostface killer in Scream 6. So we now move on to Devin Dakota's character's character and Jack Champion's character. Um, Devin Dakota will be playing a young woman by the name of Annika and Jack Champion will be playing a young man by the name of Ethan Landry. So let's start off with Annika. I've been hearing rumors about Annika possibly being the girlfriend of Mindy Meeks Martin. That is very much possible. We do see her multiple times in the trailer, so that tells me that she is going to have some type of significant role. If not a like, super big role, she is going to be featured You know, a good part of the movie anyway. We do see her in the scene where Ghostface shows up at the um, fraternity house. We do see her in the scene where Mindy is um, crawling across the ladder trying to get to the next window trying to escape Ghostface and we do see her waiting behind waiting her turn to you know crawl across so I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say for Devin Dakota's character she will turn out to be a victim I don't think she's gonna survive in this movie especially seeing how that scene where we got in a trailer with Mindy crawling across the ladder I don't think she's gonna make it but that's just early assumption. Obviously, anything can happen. We know for a fact the stream is known for their fake outs. So, you know, definitely keep an eye out for the fake out for any one of these characters. So now let's move over to Jack Champion's character and Ethan Land um, Landry. Um, a lot of, you know, Stu Mocker vibes I'm getting from this kid. And another thing to keep note of is that he did follow Matthew Lillard on Twitter. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, we don't know what type of who is he going to be is he just going to be a friend of the group a new friend of the group is he going to be somewhat linked to Tara is he going to be Tara's new boyfriend or we don't I mean Tara didn't really have a boyfriend in screen five but there were some insinuations that her and Wes Hicks kind of had a little thing or at least Wes had a thing for her what have you so it's going to be interesting to see you know wh wh where he fits in in terms of the group but the fact that he followed Matthew Lillard on Twitter definitely gives me vibes that he could potentially be revealed as Ghostface. So out of all these characters so far that I've, I've thought and theorized about in these new characters, especially the male characters, I think that Jack Champion's character is the most likely to turn out to be a Ghostface killer. All right, so now we move on to the next two characters I have from the um, cast list. Um, we talk about Brooks on the left and Jason Carvey on the right. Obviously, Thomas Cadro, um character, his name is Brooks in this film, from what we see in the cast list. And obviously, Tony Revolori on the right is going to be named Jason Carvey. Now, a lot of us, let's, let's start off with Tony's character, because a lot of us believe that he's going to be the opening scene kill, or at least part of the opening scene kill. I'm actually going to go away from that. And later on in the video, I'm going to explain why I'm going to go away from that. I do think that Tony's character will be killed off. I don't think he's going to have that big of a role in Scream 6. I think he's just going to be... We see him for a couple scenes, you know, maybe get to know him a little bit. 
and then subsequently he's going to be killed off. Whether or not his death has some meaning to it, obviously will remain to be seen, but I just don't really see too much from Tony Revolori in this movie. I do definitely think that he is going to be a victim. As for Thomas Kadrat's character, Brooks, not too many details on him. Another person that you can just say that might be just another body part that's doomed to fall. We will see. I Like I said, there's not too much information on Thomas Kadrot's character. So definitely keep an eye out for this character as more details comes out about the film. Maybe we'll see him in some trailer, in the, in the second trailer that's due to come out. We'll see. But, you know, not too much on his character. That, that you can honestly say, you know, you can make the case that maybe he might be a ghost face, which is, you know, why there's not too much information or why we haven't seen much of him in the footage of the trailer, what have you. So, could he be a ghost face? I, yeah, possibly. I'm going to say no. You know, I just think he's going to be another character. He's going to be either a victim or a survivor. And I am going to actually lean more towards survivor because I don't think he's going to have that much of a role in this movie. I don't think his character, unfortunately, is not really going to matter to the grand scheme of things. So that's the direction I'm going to go with in terms of the Brooks character. We now move on to Samara Weaving's character. She is going to be named Laura in this movie. Now, I don't know if you guys caught this as well. This is an homage to Sidney Prescott's character in Scream 3. As we all know, when Sidney was introduced in Scream 3, she was working for the Crisis Hotline where she revealed her name to be Laura. She was in hiding. She wasn't giving out her real name. This is really fascinating for me in terms of the Samara Weaving character because a lot of us, including myself, you know, thought that, or at least think she could be the opening scene kill. We didn't think that really she was going to have too much of a big role, that they just brought her in for the star power and just because of her relationship with Radio Silence doing Ready or Not. A lot of us thought that she is going to be the opening scene kill. However, given the, some of the details that we got in terms of the character names in this cast list, and the fact that they decided to name her Laura, I'm going to say that Samara Weaving's character is going to have a bigger role than what we might think. And I think she actually might turn out to be either a victim or a survivor. I don't think she's going to turn out to be a Ghostface killer. And I think she's going to have a bigger role than what we might think. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But given the vibes I'm getting off of this, you know, obviously it's just a name or what have you, but I just think there's some significance to it. Why would you give her a name that is linked to Sidney Prescott, the ultimate final girl in the franchise? Something to think about, in my opinion. But I definitely do think that um, Samara Weaving's character, now in my opinion anyway, I'm going to lean off of her as a Ghostface killer or an opening scene kill. She could potentially either be a victim or she's going to be a survivor. I actually think she's going to be a survivor in Scream 6. But that's just me. That's my opinion on this character. I'm, you know, turning the page on this character in terms of her being a victim or opening scene kill. I think that she's going to have more significance in this movie than we thought her character anyway. Now we move on to Leonardo Liberato's character, Quinn Bailey and DeMont Maroney's character, Detective Bailey. Now, we knew in the summer, you know, when, you know, details were leaking out about Scream 6 and DeMont Maroney's character, we knew he was going to be playing a detective. What we also knew is that he has a daughter that is linked to Scream 4. Now, they never revealed if this daughter is dead or alive. This is important. I'm going to explain why this is important. Because obviously, in this cast list, it is now confirmed that Quinn Bailey is the daughter of DeMont Maroney's character, Detective Bailey. Now, what is fascinating about this is what I just said to you guys. They said in the summer, we do not know if her character is dead or alive. Now, what does that mean? Well, in my opinion, guys, I'm going to say that Liana Liberato's character is going to be the opening scene attack or kill of Scream 6. And the reason why I say that is you have to put it into this context. If you're saying that you don't know if this character is alive or dead, but she has some linkage to Scream 4, well, in my opinion, I went back and I went into Scream 4 cast list. There is no character by the name of Bailey with the last name Bailey. None whatsoever. 
Now, what this tells me is that Liana Liberato's character of Quint Bailey in Scream 6 could potentially be a reenactment of a kill or a an attack from Scream 4 that we didn't see in Scream 4. And that's the direction I'm going with. And the reason why I'm going in this direction mainly is because when you go back and look at the trailer, you do not see Liano Liberato's character at all after this quick little snippet shot that we see here in this overlay. That is the only time in the Scream 6 trailer that you see Liano Liberato's character at all. You don't see her interacting with Tara Carpenter, Sam Carpenter, Mindy Meeks Martin, Josh Segura, Jack Champion, Kirby, Gale, none of them. You don't see her character interacting with any of the returning nor other new characters in the trailer. What that tells me is that we could potentially be headed for a reenactment or a rehashing of a kill or an attack that we did not get to see in Scream 4. Because why else would you sit there and bring this character into the fold but there, then say, oh, we, we don't know if she's alive or dead. You're just going to have to wait to find out in reference to DeMont Moroni's character. That, that makes no sense. If she's supposed to be in the movie, she's supposed to be in Scream 6, why would we have to go through the whole story arc of, oh, well, she was a, she's, she was involved in Scream 4 and she was attacked or she could be dead, but we're not going to tell you guys. The reason why they're not going to tell us is because this is their opening scene kill. This is the setup for the potential story arc of what Scream 6 is supposed to be about. So in my opinion, guys, I definitely do think that Liana Liberato's character is going to be the opening scene kill i am gonna think i do think she's gonna get killed and the main reason is because we don't see her throughout the rest of the trailer now could that be a fake out to make us believe she was a victim and she could be revealed as ghostface yeah sure absolutely i said it here earlier in the video you gotta pay attention for those fake outs but as it stands right now i am going to go in the direction that liano liberato's character is going to be killed off in scream six but it's going to be a reenactment of a kill that we did not get to see in Scream 4, which is going to set the table for the events in the storyline that we are going to be getting in Scream 6. Now, we move on to DeMont Maroney's character. You know, obviously, Quinn is his daughter. We obviously figured that out here in this castless reveal of the character's name. I have stated in previous videos that I do not believe that DeMont Maroney's character will be revealed as a ghost face. And the reason why I don't believe that is because especially if his daughter it does end up killed i highly doubt that he would want to turn into ghostface himself just because he's mad that other people who have encountered ghostface survived i just i me personally i just don't buy into that however what i do buy into is that we have a detective who lost his daughter to a previous ghostface and he wants revenge and he's possibly obsessed I've said this before that I believe he is going to play the type of detective who is obsessed with bringing this ghost face down in the potential that this ghost face is a returning ghost face and the same ghost face that potentially killed his daughter in Scream 4. That's the direction that I think we're heading for with Dermot Moroni's character and I'm not going to lie it's going to be fascinating to watch. I I initially thought that he was going to be the father of Rebecca Walters being that Rebecca Walters was a publicist in Scream 4 from New York. She was Sydney Prescott's publicist. She was, you know, working for the New York Times. However, we got this new piece of information from the cast list that that is not the case, that DeMont Maroney's character's Detective Bailey, his daughter's name is Quinn, and it's going to be very fascinating to see if it plays out the way that I think it's going to play out. But again, I definitely do think that Liana Liberato's character, Quinn Bailey, will be the opening scene kill of Scream 6. Okay, so now we move on to the special guest cameo appearance. Who will be the special guest appearance in Scream 6? Well, I have two possibilities here. The first obvious one is Nev Campbell. We had rumors after the whole contract dispute was you know, leaked out to the public by Nev that they were able to bring her back for a few second cameo. That was going to be basically the ending of Scream 6 is supposed to be a cliffhanger to where we see Ghostface calling Sidney Prescott and then it rolls to the credits, what have you. However, I'm going to say this is highly unlikely. I know a lot of us are holding out hope for so, but I just genuinely do believe 
that she would not be in this film at all. I just, I don't. And the reason why I be believe this is because it, you got to think of it this way. If you're Nev Campbell, like, granted, they could have gave her the type of money, you know, that was worth for a cameo. But she even went on record saying that she feels like there's more story to be, story to be told for the Sydney Prescott character. Why would she just settle for a few seconds when she was supposed to be in this movie, like, what, they said, like, 20 minutes, 22 minutes? So, me personally, I just can't, I don't think this is going to happen. I just can't see Nev Campbell being in Scream 6 even as a cameo. I do hold out hope that she will be back in Scream 7, but obviously that remains to be seen. Now, the second possibility here, and I think this is the more likely possible, possible scenario that plays out, is Nightmare on Elm Street Final Girl, Heather Langenkamp, who played Nancy in Nightmare on Elm Street, will be the special guest appearance cameo that we see in Scream 6. And the reason why I believe this is more possible than Nev Campbell is because of this photo we see right here, back in November that was posted on Twitter, where you see Heather Langenkamp hanging out with Radio Silence, Kevin Williamson, and the rest of the crew. I think this is a telling sign that this is going to be Heather Langenkamp who is our special guest appearance. Now, who will she be playing? Well, I'm going to actually say that, I mean, I'll put it this way. She could be playing anybody, right? You know, she could just be basically somebody that who's not even important. They could just be bringing Heather Langenkamp in just as a cameo, just for star power or whatever, especially to the horror fandom. But in my opinion, I think that her cameo, if it is Heather Langenkamp who is the cameo, I think she is going to be Leslie Mocker, Stu Mocker's sister. And the reason why I believe that to be true is because of the age. She can obviously pass off to be a mother who's obviously maybe in her early 40s, mid 40s, who who was the mother of Vince Snyder. You know what I mean? Who's supposed to be what anywhere between 18 and 20 years old, I'd say, in Scream, in Scream 5, what have you. She looks the part of a mother. You know what I mean? Like she just looks it. And in my opinion, I think it would be a tremendous opportunity because, in my opinion, if you are going to introduce the Leslie Mocker character into the franchise, I want it to be an actress who is not only noticeable, but is, you know, somebody we can be like, you know what, yeah, I, you know what, let's let's keep our eyeballs on this person, you know? And I think that Heather Langenkamp would be the perfect, the perfect actress for that role of Leslie Mocker. Now, could I, now this is just speculation on my part. You know what I mean? This is just kind of more hope and theory that she turns out to be Leslie Mocker. She could turn out to be Christina Carpenter for all we know. She could be anybody. But me personally, I think that if they are going to do a cameo with Heather Langenkamp, I would like to think there has to be some significance as to why she is in this movie, even, even just for a few seconds, for a cameo. And in my opinion, I think that if they do bring Heather Langenkamp in for a cameo in Scream 6, it is a very high possibility that she will be revealed as Leslie Mocker. Now, will she be revealed as a mastermind at the end of Scream 6? I doubt it. I think if they do reveal her as Leslie Mocker in Scream 6, she will return to Scream 7 where we will get a more in-depth look at the character of Leslie Mocker. But that's just my opinion. But okay, everyone, that is it for this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about the cast list. Who do you guys believe will be victims, survivors, or ghostface killers? As well as let me know what you guys think about my theory for Liana Liberato's character. Do you think that I'm correct about her scene possibly being a reenactment of a kill scene that we didn't get to see in Scream 4? As well as let me know what you guys think about the special guest cameo. Who do you think will be the special guest cameo in Scream 6? Hit the comment section. You know I love to hear from you all. Once again, this is I shot him six times. YouTube Horror Movie Channel. I'm your host and creator of the channel, Marcus. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. I will catch you guys later.